Hello, my people. We are in 10.5, which is on tangents. Okay, so basically a tangent is, well, several different types of tangents. Um, it's a liner segment in, that intersects a circle like one time. So it, it, it's what I consider like a, a side swipe. You can actually stop where it hits the circle um, or it can continue on, but it's like side swiping. Oh, we're going to give you guys a visual. Okay, yeah, these are tangents. See how this line it doesn't go through the circle. It kind of swipes the side of it. It only hits at one point. Same thing over here, just one point. It doesn't have to look like two circles, though. Um, yeah, here's a tangent. BC is a tangent because it kind of sw side swipes the circle. All right. Uh, AB is a radius. And AC is, uh, well, that, that's, that's, that, are we going to tell about secants here? Is, is that in here? Mm, no. Okay. Well, I guess we'll be talking about secants later. But um, anyway, so a tangent is basically a, a side swiper. It, it, it hits the side of the circle and continues on. All right. So let's see. Um, oh, okay. Where it hits is called the point of tangency. Um, and then again, it's only going to hit one time. Because it sideswipes it. You can have common tangents uh, because you can have more than one circle. All right. Um, okay. Tangent. Oh, okay. Yes, yes, yes. You need to know that. Let me go back to this one. This rule says that if you have a tangent that intersects a radius or a diameter, then this angle is automatically a right angle. It's automatically 90 degrees, which means this triangle is a right triangle. But it has to be a tangent intersecting either a radius or a diameter. So you see we're going to do the Pythagorean theorem coming up, for example, number two. Um, let's see what else. Two segments, same exterior point, then they are congruent. Um, I don't see that. Come on, show me an example. All right, well, maybe it'll show me an example later, but they're saying that, um, let's say you have a circle and you have a tangent on the bottom of the circle and you had a tangent on the top of the circle, then these two tangents would be equal to each other. So maybe we'll see that here in a minute, but it, this is not really it. So we don't have tangents. If they if they were to keep on and, and they were crossed, we'd have that. All right, let's get to it. All right, I'm on page 601 of your workbook. And uh, let's see. Example number one. Identify the common, the number of common tangents that exist between each pair of circles. Uh, if no common tangents exist, state no common tangent. Um, okay, well, uh, let's look at the definition one more time. A common tangent is a line or segment that is tangent to two circles in the same plane. So for A, we have one tangent because it hits both circles. We have this tangent because it hits both circles. And we have a third tangent because it hits both circles. So by their definition, there's three. All right. B, one, two, three, and four. All right, so we have four. All right, example number two. All right, it says AB is a radius of circle A. It says determine whether BC is a tangent to circle A. So they're doing the Pythagorean theorem to see if it's actually a right triangle. Because the rule says if you have a radius or a diameter that intersects a tangent, then this forms a right triangle. This is your right angle, angle B. So if it turns out to be equal to each other using the Pythagorean theorem, then, hey, it's a right triangle. Woo-woo for us. All right. If you notice, this 6 is only this little segment from C to the circle itself. Because remember, the hypotenuse has to be the biggest number of all. And it's the hint of the radius that tells us what our hypotenuse is. Okay, this is what I'm saying. AB is a radius. It is 9. A to the circle, it doesn't have a point here. It's also 9 because it's also a radius. So we have to add 9 plus 6 to get our hypotenuse. And that kind of throws people off. But remember, if AB is a radius, then A to this point right here is a radius. 
It's also nine, nine plus six. That's 15. That's the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is 15. So nine squared plus 12 squared equals 15 squared. So 81 plus 144 is, um, why am I not, why can't I just put, oh, why can't I just put, it would be a whole lot easier, 15 squared is uh, 225, let me put 225, oh, come on people, really, boom, all right, so 81 plus 144, you want to add those together, that's 225, and since that equals 225, since they are equal, this is a right triangle, all right, so segment, um, what's it, BC, is it perpendicular, okay. so segment BC, is perpendicular to radius AB at point B. Therefore, by theorem 10.11, BC is a tangent to circle A. Because, I mean, it came out to be the same number. So there you go. They're, they're equal. The Pythagorean theorem works. It's a right triangle. Whoop, whoop. Good for us. All right. Everybody go to page 602 for example number three. All right, use tangent to find missing. Okay. So, again, we're going to be using the Pythagorean theorem. And here's how I know this. I have a side swiper, QS, intersecting a radius RQ, or QR, what do you want to call it? Side swiper intersecting a radius or a diameter. That makes angle Q automatically 90. That's perpendicular. The upside down capital T means perpendicular. It's a 90 degree angle. We're going to use the Pythagorean theorem. So it's going to be, uh, what do they do, RQ? All right, so it's going to be X squared plus 4 squared, because that's QS, but since SR is the hypotenuse, remember we add those together, X plus 2 squared. Okay, here we go, X squared plus 4 squared. Equals X plus 2 squared. Golly, they don't make this easy, do they? Because you have to add these two parts together, segment addition, polish it back in unit one to be SR. Okay, so let's see, x squared plus 4 squared is 16. And then, oh gosh, this is a mumble jumbled mess. All right, so in your workbook, it's a little bit easier to read. Um, this is a FOIL method. It is x plus 2 quantity squared, so it's x plus 2 times x plus 2. Well, x times x is x squared. x times 2 is 2x. Two, 2 times x is 2x. Add those together, you get 4x. And then last, 2 times 2 is 4. Okay, so it looks like they subtract 4 to the other side. 16 minus 4 is 12. Um, what in the world? Oh, they skipped a step. Okay. Golly. That's what I, I don't like about this program. They make it a jumbled mess. X squared. Subtract X squared to the other side. X squared minus X squared cancels out. They didn't show that step. Uh, the opposite of adding 4 is to subtract 4. 16 minus 4 is 12. That leaves 4X to the other side. Good night. Have mercy. The opposite of multiplying by 4 is to divide by 4. 12 divided by 4 is 3. So... 3 equals x. Can't make that a little bit easier to read. Oh, all right, so is that I got to find? I always check to make sure, yeah, find the value of x. Okay, I got x is 3. That's horrible. Y'all, people who do this program, y'all are supposed to be smarter than me. You've got more letters after your name than I do, and I have a master's degree. You got to come up with a better way to show this. This is just horrible. All right, let's do our check. All right, we got BC is tangent to circle A. All right, so BC is my side swiper. It looks like AC is my radius. That makes this a right triangle. All right, so here it goes. I'm going to do Pythagorean theorem. I'm going to do X squared plus 14 squared. And that's going to equal... Oh, nice. That gave me the whole thing. 17 squared. Okay, so now I've got x squared. Plus 
Um, 14 squared is 196 equals 17 squared. That's 289. I'm going to subtract 196 to the other side. So 289 minus 196 is 93. The opposite of squaring is to square root. So we're going to square root the 93. And um, let's see, what's the square root of 93? It's about 9.64. 9.64 to the nearest hundredth. All right, there we go. 9.64. Units. All right, there's our check, you guys. All right, let's move on. Page 602 down at the bottom is example number four, and it's check. Okay, great. This is what I was trying to look for. We have two tangents. We have two side swipers. AB is a tangent. AC is a tangent. And because they're tangent to the same circle, they are equal to each other. That's what that rule was. And uh, I was looking for an example from a visual people, and here it is. All right, a photographer wants to take a picture of a local fountain. She positions herself at point A. There she is. So that the fountain will be centered in the picture. A, B, whoop, and A, C, whoop, are tangents to the fountain as shown. If the lengths of the tangents are given in feet, find A, B. All right, first off, they're equal to each other. That's what the rule says. So we're going to set A, B, which is 7X minus 9. Really? Really? Picky. Um, equals 5x plus 5. Okay, we are in, Oh, God, I skip steps again. All right. That's fine. That's fine. Subtract 5x to the other side. 7x minus 5x is 2x. Opposite of subtracting 9 is to add 9 to the other side. 9 plus 5. All right, that's going to be 14. 14 divided by 2 is 7. So x is 7. Now, don't stop there. Don't forget, uh, you guys, if uh, you're in geometry, make sure you look back and see that they're asking for X or to find something else. And, you know, usually they're asking for something else. We're going to take that 7 and plug in for AB. So 7 times 7 and then minus 9. 7 times 7 is 49. 49 minus 9 is 40 feet. So she's standing 40 feet away on both sides, by the way. So if you were to take that and plug in on the other side, take seven and plug in, five times seven is 35 plus five is 40. So if you're a student um, who's very conscientious, might wanna plug into both, make sure you get the same number to make sure you've done it correctly. All right, our check, we got landscaping. All right, landscape designers creating a tiled patio with a circular design pattern. A corner of the patio is shown, DE and FER tangent. All right, that means they're equal to each other to circle G. And the lengths of the tangents are given in feet. Find D, E. All right, you guys set them equal to each other. All right, we got 3X minus 3.5. I know y'all all love decimals. X plus 0 0.5. All right, the opposite of adding X to subtract X. That leaves us with 2X. The opposite of subtracting 3.5 is to add 3.5. Well, 3.5 plus a half is 4. And the opposite of multiplying by 2 is divide by 2. All right, so let's do it. X is 2. 4 divided by 2 is 2. I'm going to check to make sure that's what they wanted. It is not. But that is the number we're going to do a little plugging and shugging. So I'll plug in a 2 right there. 3 times 2 is 6. 6 minus 3 and a half is 2 and a half. All right, check your work over by putting it over here if you want. 2 plus a half is 2 and a half. So that tells us we did a fabulous job. We are correct. All right, let's move on to your next page. All right, top of page 603. All right, let's see what we got here. We've got a circumscribed angle. Um, okay. So uh, a circumscribed angle, um, it, it's basically uh, an angle uh, mm, whose who's sides are tangents. But it, it, there's, there's a rule here. Um, when this happens, like you've got, you've got a quad that's kind of half inside the circle and half outside the circle, but you've got an angle who has tangents. 
angle P and its opposite angle S will add up to be 180. So opposite angles P and S will add up to be 180. It doesn't necessarily uh, mean Q and R, but if they're a radii, then it's going to be 90. Because remember, a side swiper and a radius will automatically make a right triangle. Same thing for side swiper RS and PR. Okay, so kind of kind of pay attention to that. Um, yeah, yeah. But angle P and angle S, they'll add up to be 180. That's the rule you need to know. Uh, okay, so yeah. I, I, that's why I said sometimes... Uh, they're completely on the outside, so this doesn't need to be radius. All right, so example number five, where are we? I'm on page 603. Let's get to it. Okay, so there's my side swiper, my tangent line intersecting my radius. There's my 90 degree angle. Side swiper DF, that's my tangent line intersecting my radius. That means I've got a 90 degree angle. So that means that angle G and angle D will add up to be 180. Angle G, the letter in the middle is the vertex, is 19x plus 9. Angle D, 10x minus 3. We're going to add them together and set it equal to 180. So these are supplementary. All right, that means they're going to add up to be 180 degrees. All right, so we got 19x plus 9 plus 10x minus 3. Is 180. Oh gosh, here we go again. Off kilter. Um, okay, what do they do here? So oh gosh, what did they do? That looks like they skipped some steps. So 19x plus 10x is 29x. Um, and then plus x equals 180. Alright, so what they do after that, because 9 minus 3 is 6. Okay, so they added 6 to the other side. No, 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 I'm sorry. They subtracted 6 to the other side because the opposite of adding is to subtract and get 174. That leaves the 29x. And the opposite of, um, what is this out here? Uh, the opposite of multiplying by 29 is to divide by 29. So 174 divided by 29 is a 6. And they are asking us to find what angle, angle D. So we're going to take our 6 and plug in to the 10 times 6 minus 3. Well, 10 times 6 is 60. 60 minus 3 is 57 degrees. There is our example number 5. And I'm going to turn the page in your workbook. And I'm doing the check on page 604. Okay, so I see two 90-degree angles, which means angle W plus angle Y will have to be 180. All right, so I'm going to put 7x plus 10 plus 4x plus 5 equals 180. 7x plus 10 plus 4x plus 5 equals 180. Adding like terms, 7x plus 4x is 11x. 10 plus 5 is 15 equals 180. The opposite of adding 15 is to subtract 15. So 180 minus 15 is 165. The opposite of add, uh, multiplying by 11 is to divide by 11. 165 divided by 11 is 15. All right, so X is 15. They want me to find the measure of angle Y, which means I am plugging a 15 for the 4X plus 5. So 4 times 15 plus 5 is 65 degrees. All right, there is my check for example number five on page 604. And oh, my last example with a check, here we go, example number six. Okay, so you have multiple tangent lines. You got a big old side swiper over here. You need to know that KN and KM are equal. So these are both sevens. Same side swiper creates MJ, which means PJ and MJ 
because they both meet at J are 14. Over here, PL, NL, they both meet at L. They're both side swipers. That means NL is an 11. So these are both 7s. These are both 14s. These are both 11s. Okay, what do they want? They want uh, JM, JP or 14. All right, equal to KN would be KM. And that's equal to 7. And equal to LP is LN. And that is 11. All right, to find the perimeter, you add all parts together. 7 plus 7 plus 14 plus 14 plus 11 plus 11. Okay, let's see here. They do it... Okay, one step at a time. All right. So 7 plus 14 is 21. All right, then it says KL equals KN plus 11, because that's what that measure is. Then we got 7 plus 11, or 18 units. Okay, um, and then JL is 14. And add that to LP, and that equals 14 plus 11, and that's going to be 25. Just be easier to add them all together. Good grief. Uh, okay, so 21 plus 18 plus 25, that's going to be 64. Lord! All right, so the perimeter is 64. Again, golly, you guys, just add, easier to add. 7 plus 7 plus 14 plus 14 plus 11 plus 11, boom, you're done. 64. Okay. Oh, fun. Now we got X's involved. Lovely. All right. So we got quad R S T U is circumscribed about circle J. Perimeter is 18. Find the value of X. All right. Well, here we go. If DR is 3, CR is 3. If UC is X, UB is X. If TA is X, TB is X. And if AS is 3, then DS is 3. Okay. So we're going to add 3 plus 3 plus X plus X plus X plus X plus 3 plus 3 equals 18. All right, visual people, I got you. 3 plus 3. That's these two. Plus X plus X. Plus X plus X. Plus 3 plus 3 equals 18. Like terms. We got 1, 2, 3, 4 x's. 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3. Well, that's 12. Equals 18. All right. Subtract 12 to the other side. 18. Minus 12 is 6. And the opposite of multiplying by 4 is to divide by 4. We're going to get, um, let's see, 6 over 4, it's 1 and a half. 1.5. Going to get a decimal. All right. So X is 1.5. And our answer is A. Okay, I don't have to find anything else. No, just X. All right, so there we go. Okay, you guys, the answer choice is A. We are done with example number six. We are done with this lesson. If you have any questions, let me know. Ask your teacher. That's what we're here for. You guys have a great day.